Right, this is unscripted, written by Erin R. Dooley. And Erin is in Illinois. Because I checked her phone number. Interior apartment day. A red dot flashes in the upper right hand corner showing a recording camera's point of view. April 26, a casual gal you would mistake as aimless looks straight into the camera, breaking the fourth wall. I'm April. Uh, things that make me unique. Um, a fit for your show. Ooh. Series of shots, audition tapes. April walks down a city block, trying to look serious, but clearly not comfortable in her business suit. You name a job, I've done it. April on a volleyball court in brand new athletic apparel, tag still on. I play volleyball nearly every day. April in a swimming pool. I can hold my breath for four minutes and 10 seconds. April channels her Julia child in the kitchen. I can cook 30 minute brownies in 20 minutes. April at a farmer's market dressed like a hipster. I've bred prize winning clams. April stands in a random alley wearing a hoodie, clapping with one hand. <laughs> I can tell you the sound of one hand clapping. I would be perfect for... April is in front of a homemade backdrop, now in sequin top. She has tons of makeup on and her hair is in an updo, speaks with, a f with faux haughtiness. Prince and princesses. Same backdrop, April is in a conservative top, glasses on, her hair in a bun. Smartest person on earth. April now has crazy hair with a feather in it. She does a terrible rocker impersonation. I'm with the band. April back in her hoodie looks wigged out. Hauntings. April now in a tank top, her hair in a ponytail. We're watching. April dressed like she stepped out of the 70s. Stay alive! April in a sports jersey and ball cap. Extreme fan! April now in a ballerina outfit. Just dance. Hipster April tries to play it super cool. Scavenger. End series of shots. Interior apartment day. April in a casual t-shirt in front of the backdrop facing a camera. Amazing adventure. She shuts off the camera, her fake smile fades, she's real for the first time and she's exhausted. Oh, who's a girl got to be to get on a show? Interior cake shop day, a small mom and pop shop. April rushes in, tying her purple April on. A co-worker cleans the counter. April struggles to put her name tag on. A stern manager walks over. You're late. No, I switched with Nina. April looks around, only one other worker. Where is she? I swear, she said she'd come in early and then I would... Manager blocks April's way to get behind the counter. And you didn't finish the birthday display before you left yesterday. <laughs> Who is really going to want a gerbil birthday cake? Florence is a regular and... You know what? That isn't the point. Apron. April doesn't put up a fight, hands over her apron. Never like purple anyway. Name tag. She hands over the name tag. Manager walks behind the counter. How may you you last check? He throws her name tag in the trash can. A co-worker comes over to April. Looks like she's going to ask a big favour. Before you leave. Another argument with your cousin? The co-worker is relieved to be heard. Yes, you have to help. She always has to make everything into an argument. All I said was that fish sleep upside down. April is repulsed to even the thought of fish, gets more grossed out the more co-worker drones on. And she said that the fish scales make it impossible. I said only right after they're spawned do they sleep upside down. You agree with me, right? Uh, uh, I don't know anything about fish, except they're gross. <sighs> Why'd you let her you into arguments. Ah, babe, 
Now that's gross. The worm's all slimy and... Stop talking about fish! The manager looks over. Are you a customer? Buy something or leave. No loitering. No more free counselling sessions. Interior maze condo complex, hallway night. April drags two suitcases, one balancing a box of haphazardly packed home items. She knocks on the door to the condo. May 26, April's Martha Stewart wannabe twin sister opens the door. With a sigh, May opens the door wide to let April in. Clearly, they've been here before. Interior maze condo night, a smartly decorated high-end condo. April sets her luggage down. I won't stay as long this time. You're not mooching for a year again. April turns on her charm. Come on, sissy. She notices the empty moving boxes, confused. The closing is at the end of the week. I'm getting married in a month. Moving to Wisconsin. Any of this ringing a bell? Yeah, of course. It's just... Too busy to get fired all the time? I quit. Some of them. April walks into the kitchen, dodging May's questions. Helps herself to food in the fridge. None of those jobs are a fit, anyway. So, what are you going to do? I have a few applications in. For actual jobs or more silly application videos? They're not silly. If I get on one show, I can earn enough money to... Win? Going on a reality show is not earning money. April looks as though through May's mail on the kitchen counter. Fine, I'll win a bunch of money and I'll be set. April drops the stack of mail except a larger envelope. What's this? Insert envelope. Return mail addressed to mom and dad with an undeliverable sticker from the post office. Back to scene. Why would you invite them? It's my wedding. I don't need your permission, but it doesn't matter anyway. I can't reach them. May grabs the envelope. They're still our parents. They wouldn't be if we got emancipated. Hated, sorry. You couldn't, you couldn't prove at 16 that you had an income and a way to get housing. And look, you still can't. That shuts April up. May turns over the invitation in her hands. The first time I met Carl's family, it was like, I already knew them. I was already family. They're so calm and welcoming. Good for you. That's how families should be. It made me wish we had that. Oh, wish all you want. The fact is that they let us leave. We went off to college, said we'd never see them again, and they let it happen. April snatches the invitation out of May's hand. They moved and didn't bother to tell us. We are a family of two. April rips up the invitation. May looks like she's been slapped. She walks into her bedroom, stops. I've enabled you too long. This is the last time. When I move in with Carl, you can't stay with us. May trips over a large canvas tote bag with chameleons all over it. It's frayed and has holes in it. She throws the bag on the couch. April's clothes spill out. I suggest you get your life together before that. She goes into her room and shuts the door. Interior May's condo family room day. April passed out on the couch. The afternoon sun shines bright through the window. The phone rings again a third time. She calls her, she grabs her cell phone and answers it. Missed call. She plays the voicemail on speaker. John. You're muted, John. Sorry, guys, I'll start that again. Uh, April. Did you give Sparkle an entire bag of doggy treats the last time you walked her? She's been... Sh April tits delete. <sighs> give Sparkle an entire bag of doggy treats. April, it's Mr Logan. I was just informed it was you who took my favourite coloured Sharpies. Those will be taken out of your last paycheck. Taken out of your last paycheck. She hits delete. Keeps her finger poised over the delete button. A bubbly female voice comes on next. That's you, John. Hi, April. Hi, April. 
This is Katie from the show Crossroads. She this is Katie me. from, oh, sorry. Hurry on. <laughs> this is Katie from the show Crossroads. Horror strikes as she realizes what she has done. <gasps> no! April, did you tell your the workers? Slams her finger on delete. No! I was supposed to be deleting you! You and all the other stupid bosses! She hangs up. She collects herself. Okay. Call log. Calm down and look at the missed course. Scrolls through her phone. Dog grooming, coffee job, boring office, unknown caller. Ha! There you are. She calls, paces as it rings. Interior office building day. Katie, early 40s, stands along the wall of a busy lobby. Her personality is as unique as her outfit. Her phone rings. She looks around suspiciously as she answers in a whisper. Hello? Hi. Um, is this Crossroads? Katie slowly slides behind a ficus tree in the lobby to avoid detection. Yes. This is Katie. I'm the producer. I'm April. Uh, I got a message to call you. I don't remember applying. We're having interviews today. Can you make it in an hour? Katie slinks behind a group of businessmen as they walk in, careful to stay out of sight of the security guard. I know it's short notice, but that's the nature of this business. Of course. <laughs> Uh, where should I go? Katie sits behind a coffee kiosk. 410 State. And wear purple. Purple? Yes, as much purple as you can. Katie hangs up, turns around and runs into a businesswoman standing behind her, staring at the back of the kiosk. What are you doing here? Mr. Businesswoman, isn't this the line? Exterior office building day. April walks down the downtown Chicago street. She took the note about wearing purple to heart. Purple blouse, purple fingernails, purple eyeshadow, purple jewellery. Delores, 65, athletic looking in a bright purple sweatshirt, passes April walking the opposite way. Smile as they pass. And that's it. I don't have any more pages. Okay, guys. Thoughts on that? Who'd like to start kick off? Yeah, go for it. Um, so I I love the start with April's audition tapes. Um, I think as long as that's snappy, like quite quick, one one audition tape going into the next, I think I think it's quite a fun, quite a fun start, as long as it doesn't go on too long. Um I've just written down May was really oh, I see. Okay. I thought May was um pretty relatable as a, a person to someone that's clearly trying to get into entertainment or something. It was written well. Um, I don't think there is a line somewhere with the call log when she's trying to delete the right message. Um, I don't think you need her to speak that. I think that's maybe a little bit unnatural in my opinion. I think it'd just be better to show it in the shop, her going through the phone and deleting and finding the right one she wants. Um, I'm pretty intrigued in general. I like the purple link that we've had earlier coming back now. Um, that's intriguing. Um, but yeah, I, I quite liked it. Um, I, I'm going to just do my two points, which are, first of all, if it's a series of shots, you need A, B, C, D, E, blah, 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 down your series of shots. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, that's two minutes of, of, of shots. That's quite a lot, I think. She might want to have like a minute of it, because then it really would be like fast paced, wouldn't it? You know, cut, 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 cut. Um, and the only other thing that popped up really was, apart from the fact that a lot of people do this, they have a confusion in their head running about um, if you have a character that doesn't get named until later on in a story that would be like an unknown person who then gets named later on in a in a regular story, you know, pro, piece of prose. You can't do that in a script. You have to name them from the start because you're not telling the story like, I'm keeping this secret until it's revealed. You, you're actually, you might be keeping it a secret from the character, but you've still got to tell the bloody actors and the director who that is. So you've got to remember that there needs some continuity as well with names. Like if if the angry manager is the same as the manager, 
then you know you just have to have continuity there um what else came up there was one thing on page six that i remember thinking page six um i can't remember what it was now so maybe it wasn't massively important so we won't worry about that catherine <laughs> hello um i'm liking the premise of it um it's a couple of tiny little confusing things just with regards to the formatting of the script um again yeah i agree with you there that it's uh, i like the joke it's not like it's new but it's, it's it, it works usually well quite um well, pretty much all the time as long as it's snappy so it needs to be a little bit shorter perhaps just to keep up with snappiness um it's uh, she didn't specify that we'd stopped talking to the camera so i wasn't sure if april was still talking down the barrel or not at times because it was a bit like well you didn't tell me not to so i'll just carry on doing it but as, as an actor you kind of need to know that bit um and also the very first sentence was confusing it read uh, i wasn't sure how to read it because it's uh two questions i'm not sure if she's talking to herself or talking to the, is she recording that as a question for her tape or is she thinking out loud or because mm. it's hi i'm april things that make me unique question mark a fit for your show question mark it uh, that might need re rewording because it didn't quite flow properly it was a bit confusing as to who she was talking to what she was questioning um but i liked the premise of it um intrigued about the fake possibly producer that was quite an intriguing character it's like oh she's pretending to be a producer for crossroads that's a bit interesting um but yeah i'd like to see what happens next it, it, it formatting wise needs a bit of a tidy up though mm, definitely yeah erin um i was really curious about what the time period was because of the description of the camera yeah um i felt like it really read um like 2000s like 2000 like it reminded me a little bit of like a sitcom mixed with legally blonde so it kind of like had like that but it has a vibe almost feels like i don't know maybe like 2005 2007 ish like it had i don't know why I, that it, it was i like it's the, the red dot humor. thing isn't it sounds like yeah. a camcorder yeah. so you're like <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I should do that as well yeah yeah um and it had the the auditions for the the reality show to the time period of a lot of what how you'd submit for a reality show years ago is probably you probably submit more like you would use your iphone or you'd upload it see it seemed almost like a different like like 20 years ago or like 15 years ago or 10 years ago or something um i think it probably has a specific pacing too um i also was interested with the dynamic with like you said the purple um and then the producer seemed like she was maybe catfishing um april so that was really interesting and then um but and the parents so i almost felt like there was going to be like a supernatural twist or something strange like i don't know um for some reason so i i don't know if it's it, it seemed really i like how it has a vibe that feels like it's kind of from a different time period even if it's set in modern day i don't know i liked the i don't know it had that kind of that like comfort show, like something that you'd like really maybe binge watch or it would just be kind of like something that you might rewatch over and over again or something. Am I making any sense? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I get what you mean. Yep. <laughs> John. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the very beginning, this, you know, April doing this, April doing that, April doing the other thing. It's like it's a page of script. It's too much. You could have got around it by, by just doing that classical 2000, 2010 thing of a picture of Abel and a load of Polaroids falling on top with her in different costumes, you know, like they do in Friends and things like that, just to show her being the princess and whatever. Uh, I'll be brutally honest with you, I didn't get it. I just, I didn't get it. 
and I think that's all I've got to say. I know it's not a great deal. That's fine. It was kind of lost You're on me. You're allowed to not get it if you don't. <laughs> yeah, it was just kind of lost on me. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I get the idea that she's kind of lost or, as they used to say, free-willed. But it just... I didn't get it, anyway. <laughs> Sorry. That's fine. That, no, no, Sorry. no that, that's fine. I mean, um, it's very difficult, isn't it, really? When you think about... What is it that what, what is the difference between a script that really grabs you and a script that just makes you go yeah okay yeah what next? you know I, I don't know what that indefinable thing is it's a whole load of stuff that comes together isn't it really I mean it was, it was well written to a certain well, degree so. but for me it was just like I don't get it where yeah. is this gonna go yeah well, not everybody can like the same thing as well. No, obviously not. To... We'd still be living in caves otherwise. Yeah, exactly. So, oh, I just realised I can turn my thing around it that way. Uh, and it's not going to do it. Oh, um, okay, shall we leave it there with that one?